Hello guys, welcome back to Football Manager 2023 and welcome to episode number 95 I believe it is now of our epic quest across Europe to become the top flight champions in every European nation. We have just completed nation number 11 which was Romania. We quite comfortably won the championship over there with FC Voluntari. Moving on to nation number 12 which is Bulgaria and we've been offered the job of Biro Stara Zagora. If I've pronounced that right, again, apologies, I am British. Uh, but we've had an absolute fantastic time of it in the last three seasons that we've been a manager. Of course, we had a season out in between uh, in between Poland and Hungary. Uh, so over the last four seasons, we've knocked off three nations in total. But we now are the manager of Biro. Talentite arrives with a record of 641 wins, 153 draws and 194 defeats in his career. He's also won 14 league titles and 12 cups. Talantai will face pressure to bring immediate success to Biro, having stepped up from his previous standing to take sole charge and need to hit the ground running. If he's to win those over, I believe his appointment was a questionable decision. Uh, Angel or Angel Denev was considered to be the favourite for job, but following his public denial of any interest, the club were forced to move in another direction. Uh, FC Voluntari will now be looking for a new manager as well as they go into the Champions League. Uh, but Talantai, an Irish Champions Cup winner with Bohemians, brings a wealth of experience with him. He's earned himself a reputation for signing players under the age of 21 for long-term development and appears to be a great fit for the club's current vision at Barrow. Still prefer a 4-4-2, apparently, although we've played with a 4-3-3 now for quite some years. Uh, but Talantai lifted the Romanian first league with FC Voluntari in April and his appointment can be considered something of a coup for, for Barrow. So here we are, Bero, founded in, year, in the year 1916, so well over 100 years old now in this save, and in real life as well, I suppose. They have previously won a Bulgarian first league, I don't know what year it was in, uh, but last season they were in the second league and they've just been promoted. I'm not quite sure why the manager has left after winning the second league. Uh, so we are a newly promoted side into the Bulgarian first league. Decent transfer budget, decent wage budget as well. Not quite what we're used to uh, in in recent seasons, but obviously to get into these nations, we do have to take something of a step backwards. Top earner, we'll go over the, the players in a minute, uh, but we'll we'll have a quick look. The, the board expect us to avoid finishing bottom of the league. Now, I think that we can do that quite comfortably. A little spoiler, I have clicked forward uh, after I've saved the game to get to this point just to see what sort of odds that we've got and stuff like that so I think finishing above bottom is, is quite uh, quite achievable but they expect us to be competitive against uh, Botev Plodiv I'm assuming they're our rival finish mid-table in the first league is the supporters expectations and avoid finishing bottom of the first league so <laughs> which one do you want supporters avoid finishing bottom or finishing mid-table uh, we're not going to have a press conference to start things off. We're going to have a look through the squad. Now, we have got quite a few players on loan, uh, so ignore some of these abilities because these the, the season, I think these players are going back from their loan contract pretty soon. In fact, at the end of today. Uh, so we've, we're in 30th of June now. The best current player at the club, though, who is a full-time player is Vladimir Spazov. He is a left back. He can play as a wing back as well. He doesn't look too bad for an 18-year-old man. He's got some potential to grow into as well. Dribbling could be a little bit better, uh, as could his off the ball. But, you know, it, it's a starting point. It is a starting point. We do have some decent players here. Uh, who was the top earner? I can't remember who it said. £525 is our top earner. And it is for this man, who is a winger slash centre forward. He's scored two goals and 50 appearances. Not great, is it? Not great, is it, for, for the top earner? I can guarantee you, though, that we'll get him scoring more goals if we do play him in the squad uh, I haven't had a look over the squad registration rules yet to, to be entirely honest in fact I think I might be able to see it here under 21 players are automatically eligible to play in all matches a maximum of five non-EU players in in the uh, the match day squad uh, so that's fairly easy we've got one foreigner here as it is no he's leaving <laughs> so we've got no foreigners so we've got five foreigners to play with which is fantastic now we're not going to be attracting any of the players who we had over in Romania, uh, we, we're not quite at that level of uh, voluntary just yet. We do have some work to do. We've got a few players leaving. Uh, so obviously I'm going to keep clicking forward till I get to the point where the, the season ticks over. it probably just be tomorrow. Then I'm going to have a look and see what I can do. But key player is listed as D'Almeida. 
He's another striker. He scored eight in 12 appearances last season. He is on loan, though, from Estoril Pereira or Estoril. They are our senior affiliates, so there's the potential there to bring some players in from them as well. He's okay. He's okay. Eight goals and 12 appearances is not too bad either. Uh, obviously, as an advanced forward, he's actually pretty decent. We might uh, we might see if we can extend his loan uh, as well. So, I've got some work to do. We're not too far away from the first game of the season. Uh, we've, we've Bulgarian season seems to start relatively early, early on in June. I've got two friendlies left to play. And then I'm just over three weeks away from the first game of the season, which, believe it or not, is against uh, Ludogorets. So it, it doesn't get much more difficult than that, does it, uh, in taking on Ludogorets. Now, I haven't quite figured out how the league works yet. Uh, it's obviously something that I will figure out as I go. But in the preliminary phases, 30 games, teams who play each other twice, the top six go into a championship, which then they play five games. Teams each play each other once. So I'm assuming that's to decide the title. Teams entering the stage will start with their stats from the first league preliminary phase with 100% of their points gained. So is there really any need for this? Second phase is the teams who finish 7th to 10th. So another four teams there. They play each other twice. They'll start with 100% of their points gained. Top of this place earns a European places playoff. Okay, so it's to spread the European ones out. Uh, and then the bottom six go into the relegation fight. Now, hopefully we're not going to be in this. And then we get the European, we get the uh, we get a, a relegation playoff, we get a European playoff, uh, which is two teams. I'm assuming it's the team who finished there. The finish, team who finished third, by the looks of it, go into the playoff against the team who finished top of the second phase. Right, okay, so looking at that, it's, uh, it's 35 to 36 games that we've got in this nation which is great so like I say I'm gonna I'm gonna set myself into the club we'll obviously come back we'll do the first game of the season just to see how far away from Ludogorets we are it's just appalling that we've got Ludogorets to start with in terms of the season preview though why I'm quite confident we're not going to finish bottom of the league uh, we're predicted to finish joint eighth with Slavia Sofia so you know there's there's Potential in the squad. There is potential in the squad, uh, which is great. Ludogorets, clear favourites ahead of CSKA. Sofia, defending champions in Levski, predicted to finish third. Of course, Ludogorets didn't win it last season and their manager was insecure, so I was monitoring that. It would have been great if we could have got straight in at Ludogorets, uh, but unfortunately it wasn't to be. So the first job that became available was a Barrow, and I jumped in here. Uh, and as you can see, we've come up as the promoted squad. It doesn't actually tell me what happened with the previous manager who just says he left his managerial role in Velazar Tomovsky. He is, oh, he's, he's moved on to CSKA 1948. That's why he's left. So here we are. Here we are in Bulgaria as the manager of Bolo. Like I say, hopefully we can uh, have a decent show in here. I'm go I've got three weeks to get some players in, spend some of the money at the club. Club is financially quite sound, so and we've got a lot of wage budget to play with as well. We commit to be spending six and a half thousand pounds, uh, and we're currently got a wage budget of nineteen. So I do have some room to play with, uh, but I'll catch up with you guys for the Ludogorets game in a minute. We'll go over what we've done, and we'll take on Ludogorets and see how we get on. Right, guys, welcome back to the second part of today's episode. We have reached the first game of the season. We are at home to Ludogorets. Ludogorets are. Clearly the favourites for this game, uh, but we have made some signings to the squad. Uh, there's all the lone players from Estoril have now left, which did worsen our odds uh, in the media uh, to 151 from the 51s where we were at. We've got it back down to 101, uh, which is still not ideal. We are going to have a little bit of a struggle this season. Uh, the board still expect us to avoid finishing bottom. You can see here we're 101, predicted to finish 12 out the 16th. I think if I can get us... In this sort of area, uh, is it the second phase that we qualify for? If we can get into this sort of area, that would be fantastic. In terms of signings that we've made, though, uh, there's been a few. I've brought as many as I possibly could in. I brought Erin Delsberger in on loan from Estoril. He's come in as the defensive midfielder on defend for us today. Uh, he's very, very good in that position for such a young man, 18-year-old Portuguese. Uh, so he's going to be playing today, although the board do rate him as a good player for most second league uh, not the board, they, my assistant, I beg your pardon, rating for a good player for most second division sides. 
Erasme Barr has come in as a new left back for his. He is a 32 year old Senegalese player, uncapped by Senegal, but he's only cost us a very small amount in 3.8k. He's played his entire career in Senegal. A little bit of defensive cover. He's at 32. He's still got fairly decent pace. His bravery is great. His mentals are absolutely fantastic. He can cross the ball. He can pass. He can mark. He can tackle. But again, my assistant reckons a good second uh, division side. Ivan Christev has come in as a inside forward on the right-hand side. He's got a, a reasonable left foot. We've spent £140,000 on him from Montana. He does lack a bit of consistency, but my assistant does actually agree that he is a decent player for most first league sides. Uh, you know, he's got some... If we put him on an inside forward as attack and have a look at the key attributes for that position, he's got good pace and acceleration, agility, reasonable anticipation and composure, finishing, reasonable passing again. We are training his passing though. But he's 19 years old. He does have room to improve. He's got some good potential there. And we've already... His value, you know, he's already uh, more than what we've paid for him really. But he's only on £425 a week. So excited to see what he can do. Unfortunately, he is inconsistent again, but uh, hopefully that's not going to affect us too much. Uh, now, I, I believe this is a club record signing of £325,000. It's where most of my transfer budget has gone. And it is on Nikolai Bastunov. He has come in as a central defender. He's very, very good as a ball-playing central defender. If we yep, if we stick him on a ball-playing defender, first touch does let him down. I am training his ball control, but he's got reasonable pace and strength. Uh, reasonable stammer, jumping in reach. Again, his his mentals are not too bad and his technicals for a ball-playing defender are pretty good. He can tackle, he can mark, he can pass. His positioning is good. It's just that first touch is a little bit of a letdown. So £325,000 for him from Spartak. Varna, 20 years old, still got lots and lots of room to improve as well. Consistent, considered to be a decent player for most first league sides. So pleased with that signing. Uh, we've brought in Petar... Nedelchev on loan from Ludogorets uh, to be to play alongside uh, Bastanov in the centre of defence. Again, another one with some good attributes for a ball-playing defender uh, on defend. Fairly pleased with him. Again, good physicals, good mentals. Technicals are okay, but again, another young man at 19 years old. Got lots of potential to reach. Hopefully, he can reach that with us this season. Does lack consistency, though, but again, is considered to be a decent player uh, for most first team side I've gone back to voluntary and I've brought in Marvin Toms now Marvin did play some games for us last season he played a total of 23 in fact scored five goals four assists with a 7.19 average rating so I've brought Marvin in uh, to play as a segundo volante for us on attack again he's fairly decent for uh, in that position it's where he played for his last season uh, with voluntary unfortunately his finishing is a little bit poor composure and concentration as well not the greatest. In fact, while we're here, we'll put him on shooting, see if we can improve that finishing. But he's on loan. I don't think he's actually costing us anything. No, we are paying his wages. We're paying his £1,000 a week wages. Uh, but Marvin played really well for us last season when he did come in. So, pleased to have him here. Stefan Ardeline has come in as an advance forward on attack. Now, my assistant doesn't rate him, really. Uh, this is the, the, the man who they think is the, the starting striker at the club in Borislav Mikov, but his finishing's not great. The rest of him's not too bad, but his finishing's not great, and I, I, I just think Ardeline is actually a much better player, uh, but my assistant doesn't seem to think so. But we've brought him in for £95,000. He's on £475 a week. 22-year-old with lots of potential still to reach, so hopefully he can at least play as a backup role. He does lack consistency, though, uh, and my assistant thinks he's a second league player again. And then most recently, I've just signed him yesterday, is Justif, Justice Josephs. He's come in again to play as a segundo volante for us. It's, he's going to have to learn the position, unfortunately. At 27 year olds, there's question marks as to whether he can learn that position. But again, he's got some decent attributes for that position. Other than his finishing, his pace is a little bit of a let down. We might even put him on to some quickness training. At 27 years old, he still could possibly improve a little bit. Is consistent though, likes big matches and good player for most first league sides. So he's straight into the starting lineup today. We are taking on, like I say, Ludogorets, the the not defending champions. They didn't win it last season, but they are without a doubt the best side in Bulgaria. 
Uh, so today, the lineup that we're going to start off the season with is going to be Kupanov in goal. He's a, a very capable goalkeeper, a 28-year-old Bulgarian, best goalkeeper at the club without any shadow of a doubt. So he's going to start today as a sweeper keeper. Spasov, who is actually a left fullback, uh, is going to move across to the right-hand side. 19-year-old Bulgarian. Again, has got some good potential to go into, but he is very strong on his right foot. So I'm, I'm retraining him to play as the right-back. He's, he's the best option at the club in terms of right-back. And that allows us to bring Barr in as the, the left-back for today. Two centre-halves are going to be the new sign in Bastanov. Now, I can't play... Uh, Nedichlev, because he is on loan from Ludogorets, he can't play against his parent club. But we've got Valkanov here, who can quite comfortably play uh, as a central defender. Not really the greatest, but uh, again, has got some potential at 19 years old. We have got a very young squad here. Josephs, Delsberger and Toms, the three new signings in midfield, are going to start today. Hristev gets the start on the right-hand side. Again, a new signing. Sonchev, is it Sonchev? Playing on the left-hand side today. Reasonable right foot. He's got some reasonable attributes as well for an inside forward on attack. He can't finish though, but he's got some good physicals. Again, mentals aren't too bad. Technicals aren't too bad either, other than his, his finishing. Another one considered a second league player, but he's, he's the best that we've got on that position. And starting up today, up top today, is going to be Mikov. Uh, new signing, Ardeline. Uh, he's actually picked up an injury since he's joined with. He's out for the next couple of weeks. So we do have a lot of suspensions uh, and injuries as well of the likes. So there is some rotation going to happen throughout the season. The team is getting used to the formation. <laughs> They're getting used to it. Not expecting much today from the game against the Ludogorets, unfortunately. Like I said, they are the best team in Bulgaria and they have been for quite some time. We're, we're approaching 2050 uh, and obviously real life it's 2023 and Ludogorets are, are the best team in Bulgaria now. So, you know, almost... 30 years later, uh, Ludogorets is still dominating in Bulgaria in Football Manager. So it's going to be a difficult game. It would be great if we could pick up a result, but I don't think we're going to be able to. But I'd, I'd just like to get some points on the board early on in the season so that we're uh, we're not too in the in the relegation fight, you know, towards the end of the season. I'd like to, like I say, get into that second phase of the league and uh, so that would be 6th to 12th I think we've got to finish maybe I don't know it might be more than that we've actually started off quite well but Ludogorets are coming forward Barr makes a good tackle but he's going to get sent off for that tackle didn't appear to be a lot wrong with it for me so that's a good debut isn't it 23 minutes into your debut you pick up a red card for what looked like a fairly clean tackle so we're going to have to make some adjustments here uh, and that's probably the game over for us. We're, we're not going to get anything out of it now. We're going to move Spasov into that central defence, go with three central defenders, which just compromises our game entirely. Uh, but I, I can't really afford to lose one of the midfielders. And it's it's now advantage Ludogrets, as if they didn't have it, enough of an advantage already. Uh, and they're looking to take advantage of that uh, advantage that they've got. It's Tashev to Manev, Petrov towards Sang Sangre. Uh, Borisov picks the ball up on the edge of the area. It's a decent effort there from uh, Borisov, but it has gone over the bar, thankfully. Some of these names are a little bit easier than what we had in Romania and Hungary, <laughs> which is which is a nice surprise. Sangare, is he one of my former players? I'm sure I had a player called Sangare at some point. Uh, clearly not, because I've not managed any of those clubs. Half-time, though. Half-time, though. And we are in at nil-nil with 10 men. Which is uh, which is a pretty decent result, as things stand. But it is a kickoff highlight for Ludogorets. It's uh, Pechenov to Humphrey, a Borisov now picking up the ball, looking forward on the left hand side to Milenov. Now it's Perisic coming down the left hand side. He's tackled back, but gets the ball in towards Sangari. It's uh, we've, whoa, we've gone for an overhead kick there from the centre forward, uh, which was wild. It was absolutely wild. Um, I think this half is going to be a lot of this, though. It's going to be a lot of Ludogorets highlights, unfortunately. Uh, as uh, Toms does win that header, it's now Humphrey to Sangare. Sangare with the ball forward towards Chas uh, Sa Sashev. Sashev, but he's put it wide of the post. Is this a, a rare attack by Bero? Histrov is going to get to this one. It finds Spazov. 
nice little spell of possession for us here. Basinov looking over the top towards Mikov. It's gonna, he's going to get there. He's going to get there. He's rolled it in. Mikov has put the ball in the back of the net. We're going to... There's questions are offside here. We're going to get the VAR check against Mikov. It's been a war. Oh, my word. Borislav Mikov. Good ball forward by Basinov. The goalkeeper looked like he was going to come and then he stopped. Mikov took a touch and just rolled it across the line. We've somehow taken the lead against the best team in the country. He's not even close to being offside. Ten-man Barrow, newly promoted, a leading Ludogorets. And we're coming forward again. It's Thomas with the ball. He's tackled by Sashev, though. Sashev finds Manev on the right-hand side. Ludogorets looking to get back to the game. Feeds it into Sankari. No, 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 football manager. There was absolutely nothing wrong with that. The Barrow players surrounding the referee there. I, I, why, football manager? That was never, ever a penalty. Uh, Sangari is going to be the one to take it. Uh, and he's dispatched it. Rather disappointingly, it was it was never a penalty. Never a penalty in a million years. Football manager, please fix your refereeing situation. We've had a red card that was a good tackle, that looked like a good tackle. And we've had a penalty that was, was dubious, to say the least. Uh, that needs to be fixed in future. Um... And here come Ludogorets again. It's Sangari feeding the ball down the left-hand side into the channel towards Humphrey. Humphrey pulls the ball back to Sangari. Was that a penalty? No. That one looked like more of a penalty than the one that was a penalty. Thankfully, he went over the bar. We've got half an hour here to hold on. Manev with the throw and finds Petrov. Petrov with the ball into the box towards Milenov. Sashev has got there. He's put the ball in the back of the net. Uh, Sashev... Questions of offside again, though. We're going to get the third VAR check uh, of this game. It's been awarded. So Ludogorets have come from behind in questionable fashion to lead 2-1 away to Barrow. I don't even know who was supposed to be offside there. Football manager, sort your game out, will you? Sort your game out. Approaching the final 10 minutes now. Still 2-1 to Ludogorets, but they are coming forward with Petrov and Manev. I've just noticed that Hristev is having a poor game on that right-hand side, probably because we're not offering anything going forward. Uh, but Sangare finds Petrov. Petrov looking to get the ball in. It's cut out by Toms, though. Uh, Mikov can't win that. Pe Pechinov does. It's Borisov. Uh, Sonchev pulls in, cuts the ball out, but we've just given it straight back, and they're coming forward again. We've won that header, though, but it's going to fall to Manev. Finds Borisov. Now Milenov, Petrosic, or Perisic, sorry, on the left-hand side. Gets, manages to get the ball across and uh, Sashev has put the ball into the back of the net. We're going to get, again, the VAR check. And while we're waiting for that, I'm going to substitute Hristov off because he's had a poor game. Uh, we're going to get Shopov on. Again, it's been awarded 3-1 to Ludogorets with 10 minutes remaining. Don't know what this was potentially a VAR check for. Probably another pointless one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely pointless. Uh, he was behind the ball when it was played to him. All right, into injury time at the end of the game. Hopefully we can just keep this to just the 3-1 into injury time. Surprisingly, we've actually had four shots on target, which has been really good, considering we've been at 10 men for the vast majority of the game. But Ludogorets have absolutely battered us there, unfortunately. Poor performance from a couple of players. Obviously, like I say, not really helped by the fact that er Erasme Bar was sent off so early on for what looked like a good tackle to me. Uh, like I've said in the commentary there, it was a, it was a disappointing penalty to concede as well. It looked like it was never a penalty to me. Uh, but we're 15th after the first game, which, you know, taking on Ludogorets, the best team in the country. We can't really complain about that, can we? We can't really complain about that. Sashev is a fairly decent player as well. He's actually pretty decent, isn't he? He's valued at 4.4 million. Uh, we, we cannot afford that type of player. So Sashev... Uh, 75 goals in 143 games for Ludogorets is a good return. That's it though, guys. It is a 30-game season, the first part of the season. So we're going to come back after 10. It could be around about this sort of area. Uh, I'll obviously I'll have a look in the table and see where we're at and see who is in and around us. 
uh, and see who we're going to take on in this sort of area. I think we'll avoid Ludogorets away from home, though. Uh, but guys, thank you very much for watching. Welcome to Bulgaria. Uh, hopefully, we uh, we have a good good time of it here. Like I say, I'm aiming for sort of sixth to tenth place, as high up there as as we can get with this squad that we've got. I am still going to try and look to make some loan signings, some uh, some free signings as well. Wage budget wise, I've still got six k to play with, so there there is the possibility there as well. Thank you for watching though guys, I will see you all in the next episode, please remember to do hit that thumbs up button and the subscribe button, it helps me out with the YouTube algorithms, stuff like that, the more likes I get, the more visible I am, and the more views I get, and then the more likes I get, it's, it's exponential, I am trying to grow this channel as much as possible, it is growing and I'm pleased for that and I'm very thankful to each and every one of you who are supporting me. But I'll see you all in the next episode where hopefully we have, uh, we've actually won a few games here in Bulgaria. Uh, but cheers, guys. I'll see you next time.